In this video, we're going to look at how you can use a free program called Classic Shell to reintroduce the Start menu to Windows 8. Let's start by installing Classic Shell. I've already downloaded it to my desktop, so I'll go ahead and double click it to run. As you can see, it has a nice simple wizard interface. You can look at the license if you want. It is an open source license. I'm going to go ahead and leave the default options, create a start menu folder, which will allow us to adjust the settings later on. And it's also going to install Classic Explorer, Classic Start Menu, Classic IE9, and an update feature. Now I'm also going to go ahead and leave the default install location, which is in Program Files. Now typically, from Windows Vista onward, when you install software, you have to be very careful about whether you install it to Program Files or Program Files x86, the default system install folders, simply because there are times when either a program won't run properly from there, or you can't save or adjust settings properly if they're installed there. However, in this case, I haven't seen any problems with it, and just to keep things simple, I'm going to go ahead and install to that location anyway. So we'll click Next and install. I'm going to uncheck viewing the readme file. It's not actually a bad idea to look at it yourself, but I'm already familiar with the things I need to know out of there, and I'm going to go ahead and uncheck it. But just for your own purposes, it's not a bad idea to look at it. And then we'll finish. Now the first thing you should notice, obviously, here is that we now have a start button doesn't look like the old Windows Start button, and in fact it's not. It's one that's specific to Classic Shell. Go ahead and click on that. Now, because I've already actually run this in the past, I have some programs already showing up here, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get to the Classic Start menu settings by clicking on Programs, and Classic Shell, and Classic Start menu settings. Also notice that I'm sticking with the basic settings for now. There are actually a lot of individual settings that you can customize, and honestly it would take so long to go through those that most people wouldn't consider it worth their time to look at all the options. So you can certainly explore that for yourself. But I'm going to stick to the basics. So let's go to the basic settings tab and look at some specifics. And these are, in a lot of cases, things that we're may be going to change from even the way Windows would would uh, show them by default. And that's something that I think a lot of people would probably do more if they were even aware of these settings or how they could affect their Windows experience, even on previous versions of Windows, going back at least as far as Windows XP. Now the first option here is whether left-clicking, meaning left-clicking on this Start button down here, is going to open the Start menu or the new Start screen, which is what the Start menu has been changed to. So if we go down here to the corner, normally in Windows 8, you're going to see a little icon for the Start screen, which is where your program shortcuts have been moved to. But in this case, we're trying to bring the Start menu back, so we're going to leave it on Classic Start Menu. Of course, that doesn't mean you won't want to use the Start screen for anything. You might not want to, but if you do, a very useful option here is you can have shift plus click, meaning holding down the shift key on your keyboard plus clicking the start button can open nothing, open the start menu just like regular clicking, or in my case what I have selected is opening the Windows start screen. So I can still get to the start screen from down in the lower left corner of the screen. It's just that by default it won't happen, but if I shift click then I get to the start screen. The next option is what the Windows key does. Traditionally in Windows, the Windows key opens the Start menu. Now that's obviously different in Windows 8 with that Start menu gone. In this case, the default setting of Classic Start menu, so it acts just like it would in the older versions of Windows, is certainly one option. Um, or you can have it so that you use the Windows key to open the Start screen and say perhaps the left click on the start button to open the start menu. In my case what I'm going to do is go use a hybrid that's available here. 
I can use it to open the start menu if I'm on the desktop or if I'm in the Metro slash modern UI um, interface that's in Windows 8 it will open the start screen just like it normally would. Now next up we have shift plus win meaning shift plus the Windows key and once again you have the same options that you have for the Windows key itself. You can have it open the classic start menu, the Windows start screen, or the start menu in desktop and start screen in Metro. I'm going to go ahead and leave that to Windows start screen. Next up is computer and this would be the my computer or computer link depending on how you look at it. Now traditionally when you click on computer or my computer that opens up a brand new window that has the Windows Explorer or File Explorer displayed inside it so you can see your drives there or your folders whatever it is you're seeing in my computer um, and that's the display as a link option. I actually prefer for my own use to display that as a menu. What that actually does is create that list of drives as a separate submenu on the start menu. In other words, it's just like when you say open the control panel in the older versions of Windows, it actually shows you a list of settings when you click on settings from which you select control panel. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. Let's start with the old display as link just so we're clear on what we're talking about. Go ahead and click on OK there. So when we go to computer, it opens the My Computer window. Now let's go ahead and go back to our classic start menu settings. If I set that to display as a menu instead, now I come to a computer and I actually see this list of drives here. And that can be actually quite handy so you don't have to open that extra window just to see your drives. If, say, you're trying to open a file or find a folder or whatever that's inside of one of those drives, you don't have to open a separate window just to find it. And then there are options for other items that are on the start menu normally by default. Um, I don't like having my favorites displayed there. I don't need to get to my internet favorites. Um, and since I don't use Internet Explorer, it's of limited use to begin with. Um, sometimes I display recent documents as a menu. Depends on the computer and how what I'm using it for exactly. But for the most part, I'm not going to have it display that item because typically what happens is, in my case, I use so many different programs that open so many different types of files that might show up in recent documents that it becomes pretty much useless for me. Um, control panel. I actually like to do this the same way that I do the computer item and display it as a menu. So normally when I'm going into the control panel, I'm not looking for all the control panel options. I'm looking for a specific control panel. So instead of a control panel link, I have a control panel menu where I can select a specific option like programs or like my mouse options or my audio options. Uh, something else that I normally, well, pretty much always have on my start menu is the log off option because of the fact that my computer typically has multiple user accounts on it, uh, one for me, one for other members of my family, sometimes a separate logon for testing purposes. Um, I always want to have the log off option there so I don't have to shut down the computer from there. I can just log off and leave Windows running. Recent programs, that's the list of recent programs that shows up on the start menu on the left side or at the top depending on what what type of what skin or style of start menu you're using. Um, this is delay options which tell you how long it's going to take before a submenu is displayed. So for example if you're on the classic classic start menu where it just has a, a single column um, when you hover over an item like settings how long does it take before the sub-menu that shows you the settings options appears. I just leave that at default. You can make that longer, make it shorter. That's going to be a number of milliseconds. Um, I do like having the search box. 
If you don't use it, you can, of course, turn it off here. Um, I just like having it accessed normally. There's also this access with tab. So this requires you to actually press the tab key on your keyboard uh, and then click in the, the search area to get to the search. Uh, this isn't specifically a start menu setting here. This is for Windows 8, where instead of having it start up with the start screen, you can have it skip that and just go straight to the desktop. If you're not using the start screen, and particularly if you've put the start menu back, there's a generally not a lot of reason why you need to start up with that icon, icon and tile filled uh, start screen. So for most people, you're going to want to go ahead and leave that checked here. Enabling the start button, obviously, this is what allows you to have the start button itself. And then let's go ahead and go to the skin tab for a couple last settings. Now on this last tab, the skin tab, we have some very specific settings that relate back to this start menu style. In essence, the start menu options here were all designed as a skin for previous versions of Windows which actually still had the start menu. So in this case what we're doing is we're customizing that skin. So in this case we have Windows Arrow and that's because we have the Windows Vista and Windows 7 style start menu. So this is the Arrow interface which is also the default for those versions of Windows. We have other options. Um, we have stuff that's more classic for the old start menu. Full glass which is has more effect to it sort of the glass effect that you get from the arrow interface. Uh, this Metro option is, is something that's much more designed to, to match the overall look of the Windows Start screen and Metro UI. I'm going to go ahead and stick with arrow. You can play with those yourselves and just kind of get an idea what they look like and what you like. We have options like whether we want to show the user picture, the icon that you see when you log in. Um, how many columns we want to have, whether we want to have icons in the second column or just text, whether we want to show the name of the log in, logged in user, that's the username, whether we want to use small icons instead of large ones, whether we want to increase the font size for the menus, whether we want to make the background for the submenus white, if we want to reduce the arrow effect. I'm going to go ahead and leave this all pretty much standard, although I, I typically have a lot of programs listed on the start menu, so I, I usually go with small icons. Let's go ahead and set those changes and you can see what that looks like. So notice I've got a much smaller look here for the icons. And then the last thing we're going to look at, and this is something that's obviously specific to Windows 8 because it's a, it has to do with a feature that's only in Windows 8 so far, and that is in addition to our programs down here where we have our installed desktop programs, we also have an apps list. So in other words, these are the Metro style or modern UI apps that appear on the start screen, but now we can actually access them from this new start menu as well. So that's something that's obviously specific to Windows 8. Now, of course, the other changes that we've, we've enabled here that have to do with Windows 8. Now, when I go down to my corners, you'll see that I, I have that, but I don't have my little start icon here that brings me to the start screen. So that's where I'm going to use Shift and start to get there. Let's go ahead and go back to our desktop. So as you can see, what you get with Classic Shell is something that more or less gives you all the features of your old start menu back, or the ones that you want. It gives you customization that's at least comparable to what you had with previous versions of Windows. And it also allows you to keep more or less all the features that you have in Windows 8 that you still might want to use, and that's particularly true if you're using a hybrid that's actually a tablet and a laptop slash desktop computer. So with Classic Shell, there are a lot of things that you can do, a lot of things that you can re-enable in Windows 
really without losing the benefits of the new UI that's so useful for tablets.